One of the greatest pleasures of getting up early in the morning has to be watching the morning sunrise. And this morning, we have ourselves an absolute banger to kickstart the week. I have to say, the camera doesn't really do it justice. A bit noisy out here today as well. What I feel like this week is my first vlog back. Even though last week's video was done in a vlog style, it was predominantly focusing on the new office space and uh, taking a bit of a dedicated, deeper look into this room. But this week we resume as normal. And uh, I actually mentioned in last week's video that I was working on the audio. I know from editing the videos myself and some of the feedback that I got online was basically that the audio could do with a little bit of TLC. So as I mentioned in the last video, I picked up some Rode Wireless Go kit and unfortunately wasn't compatible with the camera so I've now put the shotgun mic on the side I've actually fabricated a hot shoe by gluing it to the side of the camera it's completely unofficial but we're gonna see how it goes hopefully the audio has improved and this sounds a lot clearer but we're gonna be giving it a go seeing how we get on with it my only concern is it's obviously a shotgun mic is designed as a directional mic so whilst I'm sitting talking to the camera like this it's lovely because it's kind of getting rid of all of the ambient noise from behind them to the side of the camera however when I'm standing facing and pointing the camera and talking to you the mic's obviously pushing out to where I'm pointing the camera not to my voice so the sound might go a lot quieter in which case I'll actually just detach the mic and we'll have to go on to the camera's audio but we'll see it's a work in progress so just the kind of heads up that you might find the audio is a little bit um, temperamental should we say for the first few videos back this year whilst I try to work out what works best but we're working on improving it. What a lovely way to start the day that sunrise was something else I thoroughly enjoyed eating my breakfast watching that rise this morning. I also actually saw some new birds on the feeder so I think it was on Saturday I went out and refilled all of the bird feeders but I made a little bit of a cocktail mix so I put in I think they're dried mealworms with the uh, sunflower seeds and then put those into the feeders and obviously that has attracted new birds so I've seen a couple of different birds different species of birds that I've not seen before so hopefully I see them again and I'll either photograph them or I'll search them and find out what they were very very nice to see because I feel like there's four or five different types of birds that come to my feeder and that's it so hopefully um, this new introduction or diet change should we say has uh, encouraged some new birds to come. Talking of animals we are now in January and you may remember me speaking about this in probably one of the last videos that I put out in 2020 regarding my beekeeping course so that has now started obviously as I mentioned before there's going to be lots of changes this year with the beekeeping association because of covid not being able to go into the apiaries and do some sort of physical learning but I picked up my Haynes bee manual which is going to be kind of like my guide I guess to beekeeping during the online course but then also when I'm at home working on my bees. Apparently it's a really great book that gives visual pictures to go along with the words so I've got a lot to learn. My first session is on the 19th so it's going to be in a couple of weeks. We've already done a few sort of like introduction zoom meetings and I also get invites to some of the talks so last week there was a scientist that was on talking a bit more in depth about the kind of like antennas and the eyes and the different kind of hair that is on the bee. It was way above my understanding and there were words that I've never heard of and that were too long for me to repeat to you. Yeah we went really deep into the sort of scientific side of the bee so so I'm going to be learning little quirky things. So a nice little fun fact actually that probably most people won't know. When bees are in flight, they actually change their vision from colour to black and white. And they do this to reserve their energy, I think, whilst they're flying. But they can literally switch from seeing colour to seeing a black or white visual, which I thought was quite impressive. So I'll try and chuck in a few bee facts along the way because the more I'm learning, the more fascinating these creatures become. I'll try and share that knowledge as I learn it as well on this channel. But for now, the education starts and then hopefully this spring we'll be introducing the bees. But I know what you'll wanna see. We have got a new member in the family. Porter has arrived. He's been here now uh, for quite some time. We've been getting him settled in and he's been absolutely a dream. 
Of course there has been some cries and some whinges and some poos and wees around the kitchen, but he has been so much fun to have. And I've been putting up quite a fight for years when it comes down to getting a dog. In fact, if I'm honest, I didn't even want to get a cat. I remember when Lids first mentioned wanting to get a cat and I'm a big cat person and I just didn't want the responsibility of a pet. And I think it took Lids probably about three months to persuade me to get a cat. And I felt like that was the softener to not getting a dog. Even though when I grew up, there was a dog in my house, I'm just well aware that dogs are a lot more work than cats. They're a lot more independent cats. I don't need to tell any of you, you all know. So I felt like a cat was a nice little middle ground. And of course, fell in love with Lumi. And uh, we then went on to get Lynx. And uh, we were really happy. Um, and I guess Lydia felt like there was a bit of a gap in the family uh, when Lynx went missing. So of course, conversations slowly started after Winston didn't quite work out to get a fourth family member again. It's kind of worked in my favor a little bit because I'm able to kind of like, you know, use that to my advantage. If I don't want to get up in the night because he's crying, I'll be like, come on, Lid, you wanted the dog? <laughs> Send her in to sort it out. Yeah, we've actually been really lucky. Last night was the first night and the only night that he's actually cried during the night because we've probably lucked out. I guess all dogs are very different, but he's just slept through every night and I was like wow this is so much easier than I thought. Uh, spoke too soon because last night he had a little bit of a cry for some time so anyway we're going to meet him in today's video which is I guess the most exciting aspect of this video. Uh, he is a joy to watch he's just so like small and tiny and he just runs around and for anybody that haven't already seen Porter he's a miniature dash and black and brown short haired. Let's uh, not waste any more time and uh, let's go and check out the little fella. We have learned that Porter is a bit of a lap dog. He's got a really calm temperament. He's quite a softy. He's starting to, I think, build up a little bit more confidence and he's getting a little bit more excited uh, when he's playing with his toys and stuff. But really strangely, I don't know how strangely it is because I'm no expert when it comes to dogs. He doesn't seem to be particularly fussed with food and he's much more sort of motivated by affection and being able to sit on your lap and stuff like that. So it's quite nice because I guess that that's what you want from a pet, right? Affection and love. As a puppy, he's already showing lots of that. Yeah, it's been lovely to, I'm just gonna go and sort Lumi out and then I'll be back. Sorry, mate, I know you were comfortable there. I'll be back in a minute, okay? I'll sort your sister out. Do you want to just wait in my spot? Just sit. 
So yeah, speaking of Lumi, I know lots of you are gonna to wanna to know how Lumi and Porter are getting along. And I don't know if I've covered this already. I feel like I have spoke about it already, but so far it's been really great. In fact, yesterday when we were sitting down on the sofa watching some TV, I actually had both of them on my blanket and that was really nice to see. It's the second time, so she kind of jumped up and I wasn't too sure if she knew that he was actually there, but because he's so chilled, he doesn't like scare her off or anything. It's working really well because it's given her the time to get comfortable with him rather than him chasing her away and making her feel scared because we have learned that Lumi's quite a scaredy cat so it's really great that he's got this calm temperament because it's helping the bonding of their relationship so they're still kind of like a bit inquisitive Lumi will go up and sniff him and then she'll just leave but there's no hissing um, there's no chasing no drama um, Lumi's eating fine she's staying indoors probably 23 hours if not more out of the day she only goes out for a toilet and comes back so she seems completely content which is great and uh, that's something that we were both a little bit concerned about but we we're also quite quietly confident as well that Lumi was going to be fine because she doesn't seem to have issues with dogs so it's a great start between the two of them hopefully in a month or two they'll be cuddled up together but I'm not going to get my hopes up too much as long as they get along that's all I'm bothered about but yeah it's been really really fun to get to know Porter and sort of get some of his traits and stuff we were saying earlier it's really funny when you play fetch with him because you'll chuck the toy and he kind of frantically chases it and then when he runs back with it he like paddles away with his little paws all delicately yeah he is a funny little man me and Lids have come up with an agreement that what's going to happen is Lids is having puppy training and she's reading lots of books and before we even got Porter she did research on dogs and she's also taken control of the dog training which is something that I've never had experience of I've never trained a dog and I don't believe Lids has either so it's all very new to us but she's done an incredible job of understanding process and of course like anything in life there are curveballs that are chucked in and there are things that you have to adapt and change to when they're not doing as the textbook would say as such. So we have a lot of learning to do with him, but I'm gonna be taking instructions from Lydia, who is gonna be taking instruction from the resources and the puppy trainer. And then that way, there should be quite a cohesive way of training him between all of us and he will be trained up to be a well-behaved dog because that's something that I said to Lids, I really wanted to have a dog that was well-trained and well-behaved that we had full control over. Now, let's be honest, he's hardly gonna do any damage, is he? But, <laughs> you know, I don't want him to be misbehaving, uh, even if it's just sort of like minor, I wanna have full control. So uh, we're not gonna be too militant with him. We're just gonna kind of like get those basics sorted. We've really, really enjoyed spending our time with him. And it's actually been quite nice because you may have noticed we've been taking it quite chilled and relaxed online. We've been taking a lot of time to spend it together and, and with him as well. And also, of course, not neglecting Lumi. She's been getting some extra loving just in case she feels like she's left out. We've been overcompensating with her as well. So, yeah, we've got two very spoiled pets at the moment, but that is the way we like it. So, yeah. What do you think? Are you a dog person? Are you a cat person? So I've just come into the bedroom and I've spotted some of the new birds around the feeder. So that bird you just saw there was a blue tit. You can tell because they've got some uh, light blue colours on their head and also on their wings. And you can see actually in the feeder, especially the one on the left, you can see there's a mixture of uh, mealworms and seeds that are in that, which I think is what's attracting these new birds. Yeah, hopefully one of them is going to come into the feeder any second. They go on the right. So that bird there on the right, that is a new bird in the gaff. So if any of you know what that is, please do let me know. I'll do a little bit of research myself. Now we've got it on video, try and work out what it is. But all of these blue tits you're seeing. We had the goldfinches here this morning. They've had their feed today. And they'll come back probably this afternoon at around about sunset. And the other bird that's come in is quite a large... Uh, brown bird and I think that solely is eating the worms um, tend to just eat off the ground not out of the feeders so you may be able to tell me what that is as well there's a cold tit you just saw come and go and then right up there in the distance is a red kite 
We've also been getting some sparrow hawks recently in the woodlands. I found uh, a pigeon the other day, or should I say half a pigeon, uh, in the woodland. Unfortunately, it had been absolutely demolished. Well, Woody's come back. He's been coming quite a lot recently. There are so many birds out here today. I think this new combination is an absolute winner. They are loving it. Look at them all in the bush. I've just quickly jumped upstairs. Jumped? I definitely didn't jump. I walked up the stairs to um, show you a recent pickup that I ordered online and I really like it. But before we do, I was downstairs editing this video with the new microphone and I have to say, I think it is an improvement. And what I'm doing is when I'm speaking from behind the camera like this, I'm just increasing the volume. It sounds pretty good to me. So this is what it looks like on. So as you can see, the actual head itself of the mic is huge, but the actual shotgun is quite small. It's really lightweight. It actually doesn't feel that different having the microphone on. The only thing that I have found is it is a little bit awkward when you're putting the camera down because this is so big. So if I was traveling, for example, I wouldn't be able to chuck this in my camera bag very easily. Also, because I mentioned uh, about gluing on the hot shoe, that would probably maybe break if it was to have too much resistance against it. So I'd actually just have to unscrew this and take it off for travel, but it's a small price to pay for the increased quality of sound. So hopefully this is the answer uh, to my problems. I'm definitely gonna still keep the Rode Wireless Go because I am really happy with that as a microphone with the Sony. It's really nice to be able to walk far away from the camera and still have a really nice, clean, clear sound. Obviously, this isn't going to be able to perform quite like that because the mic isn't attached to me, but it's definitely an improvement. So I just thought I would uh, quickly update you. So if anybody does want to buy this system because they use the Canon G7X and they want to improve the quality of the sound of the camera, I will link it in the description box below. It actually comes with a hot shoe. So I just glued it with some Gorilla Glue, which is uh, a little small tube of super glue. The brand's called Gorilla. I found them to be really, really good. There has been a few things that I've glued that have snapped but in general the glue seems pretty good so I'll also link that down in the description box as well for you but the reason why we're up here before I get downstairs making dinner is because I wanted to share with you get some light. my latest pickup from James Purdy and Sons this is the Norfolk jacket which I'm not sure what classifies a Norfolk jacket but basically it's a jacket that's for sporting and as you can see on the cuffs of the jacket, quite relaxed and casual in their build. The pocket itself almost looks like it's a flap, which is something that you would see on a field jacket as opposed to a normal blazer. The jackets that I had seen uh, that inspired me to want an Norfolk jacket in the first place normally have a buckle that goes across the middle of the jacket just here. And that's something that eventually I'll hopefully get my hands on, but I thought this was a really lovely take on that. And I wanted a jacket for when Lydia and I go on walks. It wasn't the cheapest of jackets, but you can definitely tell that within the quality of it. I mean, look at the lapels on this, absolutely stunning. And they've got a little button detail here with Purdy embossed on what looks like a little wooden pendant. So yeah, really, really happy with this jacket. I'll leave a link down to James Purdy and Son in the description box below uh, for you to check that out. But it's getting late and I'm getting hungry. So let's go get some food. So this evening for dinner, I'm gonna be preparing Lydia and I a pasta dish. Lydia has pre-prepared the sauce that she made fresh and uh, she did a little batch cook basically. So we had six pots ready to just cook some pasta and add the sauce throughout the week, which means that we can be a little bit quicker so we can spend time doing what we really wanna be doing, which is sitting down. Uh, watching Downton Abbey at the moment. But sometimes it may be we need to work, whatever it may be. But Lydia has started to show a bit of a passion for cooking again, which is great because it means that we're actually getting some really nice hearty meals because I'm not gonna lie, I've gone like the other way. And I am starting to feel a little bit inspired by her to like maybe get into a little bit more and help out a little bit more around the kitchen. I just find it so time consuming. I wanna be doing something else, I don't wanna be cooking, but I absolutely love food. So it seems strange to be somebody that loves food so much 
to then not want to cook food and prepare food and make nice dinners. It's great that Lydia is and she's working on that because over the Christmas period and just leading up to Christmas, we had some really, really nice meals. So we're gonna continue that trend. And one of the things that we spoke about was basically, one of the hardest things with cooking is making the time to cook in the evenings, which isn't a hardship at all, but it's just about how you prioritize things. So we came up with the plan that some evenings we'll actually spend some good time in the kitchen preparing a nice meal, whilst other evenings, such as tonight, we're just gonna make it a little bit more fast paced, which means meal prep, grab the sauce, so we're still gonna be getting some good nutrients throughout the fresh food, uh, but then we're just gonna bang it in a pasta, which isn't gonna take long at all. And of course, I'm not making my pasta from fresh, packet pasta, free from for lids. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that now. A new little rule around the kitchen is like, you've gotta skate around, because there's been a couple of times now where I'd like just move like this, and Porter will be sitting behind me, and then I won't send him around the kitchen, that'd be a lie, but I'll just like knock him, and I'll be like, oh, He's not really bothered, but it bothers me because the last thing I want to do is tread on him because he's absolutely tiny. So yeah, we're kind of like skating around the kitchen at the moment, doing all our jobs. But he's actually put himself to bed, so I've not got to worry about that tonight, which is good. So yeah, basically this is where we're at. Lumi just enjoys watching Porter, whilst Porter enjoys watching us. You're not too bothered, are you darling? You're quite relaxed. So we're nearly there, we've got the uh, pasta sauce heating up and the pasta's just turning now. I'm actually not sure what the sauce is made of, but it looks like we've got aubergines, tomatoes and stuff like that. So we're going to tuck in with a little bit of cheese, not too much, and uh, enjoy. Porter's just about to have his butternut box. You happy? Being a good boy? No, you're not. You just took a pill on the floor. <laughs> Come on. In your bed. In your bed. In your bed. In your bed. Good boy. So we've put a little makeshift gate in front of the lounge to stop him going onto the carpet because that would be toilet central. Yeah. <laughs> if we had that open at the minute. Yeah. So we just put that across there until the wooden one arrives that you ordered the other day. Yes, hopefully that comes soon. But yeah. um which is this kind of extendable gate thing that we've got over here. So yeah, we're gonna have two of those for the time being until he gets trained to not go where he shouldn't and to go where he should. He's got his little Fortman and Mason basket of toys. Of course he has. All of the good stuff. I think this is his favorite teddy, I wonder why. It is. <laughs> is it I'm even a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> good boy. He, what did he say about the Kongs? Do you know what? He didn't really bring it up. I was like, he just loses interest. I said it was okay with this one. The licky mat. The licky mat. But generally, from what I'm seeing, he's he's fine with this because he's not an inhaler. So he should be working for his food. So we need to try to enrich him with some kind of toys to consume his well, food. Well, I'm, I'm going to... It's not for my word that you said. Yeah, the snuffle mat was, was okay, but I've got the, uh, I'm going to the fridge. <laughs> um, I'm go I've got the liver paste coming. Right. That I'm gonna see how he does with that because he just, he likes his kibble as treats. He doesn't like treats. He only likes his kibble, but he, he doesn't like the kibble as food. I know, he is the most bizarre dog. This is teaching him to wait. Yeah, it's, it's teaching him to take what's given to him and not take something. Um, but also feeding him in his crate makes him feel safer in here. You see what I'm see what you, you yeah. get their interest in it and then what you do is instead of what you, what we do to get him to go outside is 
you'd put the bell by the door where you want it to be, I would go outside and he would ding the bell and then you let him outside to come out to me because I'm the treat. Right. And then that teaches him that he can go outside that way. But he said, the only thing is, is I can teach you how to do this with him, but I can't unteach him how to do it. And there, he may well realise that ding the bell means I can go outside. And so if he sees like a squirrel or something, he might ding the bell to just go out and chase a squirrel. Well, this is what Dan was telling me they did with the Huskies though. He was like, when I first trained her, I would train her using this technique. I then taught her that ringing the bell meant we were going outside um, for a toilet and she was doing really well. And then two weeks in, she was ringing the bell to go out yeah. and then he had to stop her from, I'll ask him what he did. Yeah. He was like, I then taught her that you only ring the bell when you need a wee. Yeah. It's all progression, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And also he was saying that, say I'm gonna be like out of the office all day. Yeah. What you did that day in moving him into your office in the pen, that's a, that is the right thing to do. Right. If you need to sit there and work, but just be the, like near him, mm. that's the right thing to do, is to put him in a pen. in Because he was happy, wasn't he? He wasn't whimpering or anything. He whimpered when the pen was there without a bed. And as soon as I put his barber bed in, and it, that's when he stopped whimpering. Right. Because okay. he settled on it. Yeah. It so he wanted it. his crew comfort. Yeah. So yeah. You increase the, the amount of time yeah. that you leave them. Yeah. So then if you ever have to go out, so me and you want to go to the shops together, yeah. to the garden centre or something, yeah. you need to build him up to being able to tolerate your absence yeah. for a period of time yeah. and not get yeah. stressed out over it. Cool. But yeah, just I, felt, I feel a lot better about things. As you just heard, Lydia had a Zoom dog training session this evening and she was learning how to basically, I think it was a little bit of toilet training, but also how to be bell trained, which is a way in which you can get your dog to notify you that they need the toilet. Now, if he is able to do this, for me, that is game changing because you can be anywhere in the house and then they'll ring the bell and you'll be like, okay, we need to go and let the dog out because he needs the toilet. So that would be a really, really useful little trick for him to be able to learn. I don't know how optimistic I am because to me that sounds too good to be true, but our friend Dan in LA was the one that told me about it actually. And uh, he trained his Husky too, who did an amazing job by the sounds of it. And now if the dog needs to go out for the toilet, I think it's a she, she'll go and ring the bell. They'll let her out, she goes to the toilet, she'll come back in, it's perfect. So that's something that I really wanted to try to get Porter trained to do because I think that'll make our life but more importantly his life a lot better because he'll be able to go outside to the toilet when he wants to not when we're ready to take him uh, which is something that I quite like the idea of so yeah she had a good session she's just been updating me with it all I was busy in my office working away but this evening we are not going to be watching any telly because the evening has slipped away from us so we're going to uh, probably put Porter to bed and put ourselves to bed so I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. I'm gonna be seeing you next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Have a good one. Peace. What's in it for me?